Good morning. Um, so I wanted to keep my promise to you to continue um, because I was cut off last time with a testimony about my mother's ex-boyfriend. So just a recap. Just recently, I was delivered from a curse that an ex-boyfriend of my mother's put on me when I was fifth, about 15 years old, I believe. Um, and the reason why I say I believe, I, I don't remember the exact age. It could have been 15, 16, but it was right around there. And my mom started dating this man who openly told her that he was a Satanist. Now, my mom um, would have professed Christianity to you. And the truth be told, she wasn't about that life. I'm just being honest. I'm just being real with you. Um, my mom said that she believed in God. Um, you know, she believed in the cross of Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection. However, she had not repented of her sins. And uh, the gospel is repent and believe. It's not just believe. Even the demons believe and tremble. But there needs to be repentance. There needs to be a godly sorrow. There needs to be a realization that, oh, I am a sinner. And I can't save myself. And I really am wretched. And, it, you know, you take a good look at yourself and say, wow, I'm not as good as I thought. That's what repentance is. It's a change of mind. It's when you go from loving your sin, making excuses for it, reveling in it, getting other people to join into it with you, to hating your sin, being repelled by it, wanting to be rid of it. So I was delivered and that deliverance continued. Okay, so I was delivered that night from many, many curses that he not only spoke over me, um, but over my, my siblings as well, over my family bloodline, over any children to come. The Lord revealed this to me. And so my point is, when you get delivered, I want you to be fully aware that Satan, the devil, does not like losing dominion. He does not like losing territory. He gets very angry. But Satan is under our feet. Jesus Christ, 2,000 years ago, when he died and got back up, put the devil and his entire entourage to an open shame. Okay? He conquered death, hell, and the grave. So no matter how much the devil tries to intimidate you after the del deliverance, just continue to claim your freedom. Know that you are free and walk in that freedom. So I'm going to tell you what transpired the day after. I woke up and my, my neck was stiff. My head was pounding. I had this, I had this headache that wouldn't quit. It was like a never ending migraine. And I knew it was spiritual because when I would pray against it, I would get a little bit of relief and I would get a little bit more relief and I would get a little bit more relief. I say that to say this, you can almost expect after being delivered from things like this, curses that witches and warlocks and Satanists put upon you throughout your life. Maybe your parents went to a psychic. My mom did that too. My mom used to go to psychics. My mom used to go to tarot card readings. My mom used to entertain all of that nonsense, not realizing that the accuracy that comes from these people is because they are conversing and consulting with a familiar spirit, a demon, a demon that knows your family bloodline, a demon that's been watching you for a very long time and knows what weaknesses there are in your family and how to strategically attack you based on what worked in the past. Okay. 
So I just want to be clear that none, none of that stuff is acceptable in Christianity, okay? Going outside of God for your answers is never acceptable. Tarot cards is not acceptable, okay? Um, new age witchcraft of any kind, you know, healing that they say they're doing in Jesus name, but it's really Reiki where they pray to an unknown God is unacceptable. Okay. When you, um, when you go to a, a chiropractor and I just did a video on this, you're actually opening yourself up to a Kundalini spirit. If you, if you, um, do the research on where chiropractic came from it's another form of new age witchcraft it's another another form of healing outside of god and you'll see why you'll see where the man who created chiropractic got his idea from and it will all make sense to you so i don't want to get sidetracked i, I want to keep to um the topic and the topic is this yoked do not be unequally yoked a yoke is something they would put on two animals okay it was like a like a like a wooden frame almost or whatever they would put it on two animals so that the two animals together could pull a plow but how many of us know if one animal is pulling and the other animal is stagnant and not going anywhere not a whole lot of work is going to get done well, that's the same for your partnership, your covenant marriage, your marriage, your kingdom spouse. You should want a kingdom spouse. If you're a Christian, you need a kingdom spouse. What do I mean? I mean the husband or wife that the Lord God Almighty chose for you, not who you cho choose for yourself. There are too many of us out here today. And yes, this is an open rebuke. There are too many of us out here today, men and women, proclaiming to be Christian and getting involved with fornicating outside of marriage before they get married and getting involved with joining themselves together, yoking themselves to an unbeliever. Your choice, not his in the hopes that God will change this person for you because this is who you want. You start saying your hopes, your dreams, what you want, that's coming from a place of selfishness. And we don't want to give it up. We want God to bless what he didn't even send. We want God to bless what was not preordained. We want God to bless the person that is not meant for us. Why we are not to be unequally yoked. So let's talk about that, okay? Because these curses can be placed upon you and your children not just by the obvious, which would be dating a, a warlock, dating a witch, um, dating a Satanist, dating an unbeliever can cause curses to come upon your life too. Why? Because an unbeliever is not demon oppressed. They are demon possessed. Let me explain to you the difference. Demon oppressed means that you don't belong to the demons. They've just oppressed you. They are influencing you. They have found an access point and they have made you their home, but you still belong to Jesus. You repented and believed in the gospel. You still belong to Jesus. You might still be demonically oppressed. That's the whole reason for sanctification. The temple needs to be cleansed and cleared out, cleaned out. Okay. Possessed. That means their father is the devil. In that moment, that's who they're choosing to serve. That's who they're controlled by completely. The 
amounts of insults, criticism, words of death, you know, something that's uh, really supposed to be demeaning and degrading in the subtle form of a joke. Those are curses being spoken over your life. One can, that, that can break those curses is Jesus Christ. And especially if you come into agreement with those curses, you start to believe what's being spoken over you. Then it comes to fruition. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. And we eat the fruit thereof. This, this one Bible verse. I know you've all heard it. But I can't emphasize this enough. Especially for people with children. In chapter 6, verse 14. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Why? Of the two becoming one. That go on to do great and mighty works for the Lord together those children is to train them up in the way that they should go and produce godly offspring but how are you going to produce godly offspring in a household where one person believes in Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection, his delivering and saving grace and power, and the other one laughs at it? And the other one stays home. One person prays and the other one laughs at their prayer. It says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers for what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? What partnership has a sinner with a saint? Or did you not realize that when you were born again, you went from sinner to saint? What partnership God Almighty, the Lord of hosts, Elohim, Yahweh, do the two of those have together? They don't. You're trying to force something that will never work. Or what fellowship has light with darkness? Ship has light with darkness. What could you possibly have in common if you are spirit led and spirit filled and your boyfriend girlfriend husband or wife is the complete opposite enticed by the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life how is that going to work the only thing that that's going to do is take the person who is in deep fellowship and communion with the Lord and drag them away. That was the whole point of that person coming into your life, I hope you know. When an unbeliever is presented to, to you, and how many of you know that Satan comes as an angel of light? He comes as something very appealing. He comes as something very attractive. He comes as something very alluring, very enticing, very intriguing. good and you should flee the minute that somebody you can't force them to believe you can't force them to go to church you can't force them to pick up a bible you can't force them to pray with you and kingdom couples kingdom spouses should pray together
accord has Christ with Belial? Or what portion does a believer share with an unbeliever? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? What agreement is there in such a union? Come from it. How can it possibly benefit you? If we know that iron sharpens iron, but bad company corrupts good character and bad company, it also says corrupts good morals in other versions of the Bible. And you have established these good morals by denying yourself, by crucifying your flesh, by going through the process of sanctification, by consecrating yourself, by setting yourself apart, and then you set your sights on somebody that's an unbeliever and say, that's the one I want. What good could possibly come from that? Other than that person pulling you away from the Lord, pulling you away from building on your relationship with him pulling you away from becoming more mature in your walk. Pulling you away from your destiny, from your calling, from your purpose, from the ministry that was meant for you, if that's your, if that's your calling in life. Pulling you away from those things. You don't think that the devil strategically places people in the path of a believer, a Christian who's walking the talk to try to entice them out of everything that God has for them by deterring them by delaying them, by taking them down a path that wasn't meant for them at all. The devil would love nothing more, for nothing more than for you to forfeit. Your ministry, your purpose, your destiny. Don't make it so easy for him. Those kinds of relationships are a trap and a snare. They're to make you aware that it doesn't just affect you. It doesn't just affect you. And sometimes you don't even know that you're dating somebody who's, who's putting curses on you. Putting curses on you, putting curses on your finances, putting curses on your life, putting curses on your health, putting curses on your livelihood, putting curses on your future children, putting curses on your family bloodline. From yoking yourself to an unbeliever as a true Christian. that God didn't send. Bless or ask the Lord to bless who Satan sent. Satan knows your type. You didn't think that Satan knows what you like. Satan's been around a really long time. He knows what you like. He knows what you find appealing. He knows what you find attractive. Because of these familiar and monitoring spirits, What works? What doesn't? What will impress you? What won't? Don't, don't, don't get so caught up in, oh, he's cute. Oh, oh, she's so pretty. Looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. What does their heart look like? 
what does their heart look like how do they treat people i'll tell you right now that a godly a godly man or a woman is going to treat people much better than a non-believer treats their parents treats the waitress in the restaurant treats their neighbors co-workers friends That's the point I'm trying to make here. Why would you want anything God than less than God's best for you? Why would you want to forfeit your rightful inheritance? God has one person and one person alone. If you're meant to be equally yoked, if you're meant to be married at some point in your life, God has one person for you. Let him present that person. can choose who you want because our heart is deceitful and wicked and who can know it except for the Lord let him choose who's right for you and he will if you give him free reign if you literally seek first the kingdom and his righteousness all other things will be added unto you and if you say to him Lord you know, I, I really want somebody in my life at some point in time. I really want to share my life with, with, with someone. I, I really want to be able to pray with them. I really want to go to church with them. I really want to do Bible studies together. I really want to lift up your name like a banner and spread your glory all over the earth. I really want to. But I don't want to go alone. So it's coming from him. Make sure you know it's coming from him. I'm going to confirm to you right now. God will never send you an unbeliever. Who gets radically radically converted and then and then the two of you end up getting together when you know that that person is is really for the Lord, but he's not going to send you someone who is openly rejecting the free gift of salvation. That are asking God to bless these ungodly unions. And he's also not going to bless something that was done the wrong way. He's not going to bless something that was done the wrong way. He's not going to bless a partnership where you fornicated before marriage. Unless, unless, and I'll say this, he convicts you about it. You make the correction immediately and you marry that person and you do it his way. That's the one exception. Otherwise, he's not going to bless that. He's not going to bless a partnership that you started while either one of you were with someone else and then decided to leave that person to explore this, this new relationship. He won't bless that. I can tell you that right now. I've, I've seen that in the lives of other people and it's, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking to see the lovelessness in the household because God is not going to place his blessing on a union where they left a boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, or spouse to explore a relationship with you. Be unequally yoked, that's self-explanatory. It's self-explanatory. It's God's expectation. He doesn't want it happening. Why? Well, for one, there's a certain and a natural order in a kingdom household. In a kingdom household, there's a natural order. When someone is unequally yoked, that order, that order is thrown out of balance. Either the man is no longer the spiritual leader in the household because he doesn't believe. 
and he's not training up the children in the way that they should go. And she's not about to be she's not about to be controlled by anyone. Nobody's about to tell her what to do. She's trying to live her life. There's going to be confusion. There's going to be confusion. And there might even be some guilt and some shame associated with whatever they choose because the other parent. Long lasting consequences. So again, I encourage you. If it's in your heart somewhere that you want to meet somebody that's right for you, let God choose that person for you. Don't go seeking. Don't go searching. It's yours will always be yours. And God will present it to you in such a way that you will have no doubt in your mind whatsoever. This is a person that he approves of. This is a person who, if the two of you were to join hands in a covenant partnership, amen, could shake the earth for his glory, could turn this place upside down. partnership right two people kingdom spouses walking in the power of God are unstoppable and they're also setting an example for other people to follow when they go about that union in the proper way The natural order of the household is exactly as it should be. Watching that. Everybody benefits that's watching that because and what a kingdom marriage is supposed to look like and how they're supposed to carry themselves. Acceptable and what's not. Ready today. Um, I know it's going to give you a lot to think about, especially if you're in a relationship right now where you know you're unequally yoked and you have deep feelings for that person. Um, and you're going to have to make a choice. Who do I love more, this person or the one who breathed life into me? This person or the one who was willing to die for me? This person or the one who was willing to take my place? This person or the one who took the judgment that was meant for me upon himself? 